So it was very clear that we should be looking at where are the places that people are living and how should we build them to reflect this relatively new phenomenon of growing older? Why are we erecting barriers um, in, in ignoring the fact that we do get to live much longer than we used to? Um, why is it that in Atlanta, when you are looking to downsize, you have to leave the neighborhood you may have lived in for 20, 30, 40, 50 years? But we've also brought together a whole range of experts, transportation, health care, accessibility, people who know a lot about in-home services, about radical models and care that are being tried throughout the country. All of those people are visiting Atlanta, are coming to this building, have already been here to help share their, their knowledge and information. In reality, the sites are real, the owners of the sites are real, uh, the developers are here doing the numbers, so at the same time that there's an, ambitious, an ambition to arrive at certain models, it is also very realistic. Older folk need traditional neighborhoods, and there's a very simple reason for that. Traditional neighborhoods with walkable streets where you can be in public cuts right through isolation. One of the problems is isolation. Okay. Second problem is, as you get older, driving becomes progressively unpleasant and then impossible. So you really can't live in suburbia, so you go to a specialized community called the retirement community, which never existed prior to 1945. They didn't have to exist because you could retire in your neighborhood. And what the new urbanists have always proposed is that the neighborhood is the fundamental human habitat. And you can see it in Pompeii 2,000 years ago, and you can see it in Beijing in a completely alien structure. Within a pedestrian shed, people of different ages and people, uh, people of different ages and different incomes can walk to their daily needs. Okay? And it's fundamental. The car broke that apart. Just go to a good place and observe it. Observe how it's not gated. Okay? Observe the disparity of building types. Observe the income diversity. Observe how the streets connect. Observe how there's parking on the street. Observe how there are outbuildings and ancillary buildings. Okay. Observe how the trees actually are done. Observe how little open space there is. It's not about quantity of open space. It's about the precision and the design of the open space. The squares in Savannah are tiny. They're 150 feet across. This is a site in Fayetteville. Um, which was originally designed for high-end housing. Now, this place here, is, which will be specifically available for older folk, is also intrinsically attractive to younger folk because of the schools. This is a perfect shot at actually getting young families will love it, will absolutely love being here. And of course, the kids playing, you know, that mix that we all know about of older and younger folk, and it doesn't have to be family. You know, just, just having the life of different ages could happen there very easily. And then we did this, and we didn't constrain ourselves to, uh, uh, to the sites that we were given. We discovered that four other sites had potential. This is a five-minute pedestrian shed, a five-minute walk from edge to center. So we discovered, by looking at the map, that there are four other areas that could be retrofitted in the neighborhoods. The American cities were the best. They were the envy of Europe. European planners used to come over here to see how it was done. Okay. It wasn't what we think. They really thought we had gotten it right. Because let me tell you something, the ARC has had its head screwed on right for a long time. It's been trying to do the right thing, and it knows how to do the right thing, but it hasn't been allowed to do the right thing by the neighbors and the citizens. Okay. The last nine days have been thrilling, inspiring, and a little bit exhausting. We asked them to challenge our assumptions, and they did, and it made us all very uncomfortable. It was really hard to have healthcare providers talk with designers, to get transportation planners to talk to housing experts. These people all speak a different language, they work from different funding sources, they have different priorities, but in the end, we have some very, very good ideas. And I spoke about from the from the doorknob to the region, and I, I'm not kidding. You know, we took all the consultants, and they all have different degrees of expertise. There are people who are all about transit, and people who are all about thresholds, and how high the counter has to be in the kitchen, and we integrated it by scale. And we came up with four documents, and they're the first documents in existence that integrate the needs 
of the aging, Atlanta can either be an early adopter of the retrofitting of its suburbia or it can be a late adopter. We know now, fundamentally, two major breakthroughs from this charrette. That if you want to have a lifelong community, a place where all people can live, no matter their age or ability, you have to fundamentally think about ideals and principles of urbanism, that we're actually going to have to live together in community. We've also recognized that if we want accessible communities, communities to relate to the fact that we and our bodies are very dynamic and we're going to keep changing, that we have to look at principles of urbanism. If urbanist communities want to be places for all people, then they have to be accessible communities as well. People will look back and say they knew what was coming. They saw the forecasts, they looked at the data. What did they do? And fundamentally, we're at a place where we get to say, we tried it, we got creative, we got radical, we threw out old ideas, we experimented, we took on big challenges. Or our answer can be, they had workshops, they had meetings, they had meetings, they had meetings, they brought people in, they had more meetings. We're really at that point in, in, in the crossroad. May I suggest that you need to dream? Because the reality is extremely unpleasant. <laughs> so it's time to dream of, a very gr of very great places. It's the only way you're going to attract people to come to places like this. It's the only way you're going to fix them if you allow people to dream and start building dreams.